some of the information seen in this video was sourced by an article written by Shea Serrano. It's a great read and was extremely helpful in researching this video, and I highly recommend that you take a look at it in the description below. It's a 2007-2008 regular season, and the Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawks are playing each other in Atlanta. Almost two months into the regular season, the Hawks are sitting as the seventh seed, while Miami, a year removed from their championship in 06, are tied with the Knicks for the worst record in the East, with their poor start being mostly attributed to franchise player Dwayne Wade being out for the first seven games and Shaq regressing slightly. That being said, this looks to be another regular season game. Or so you think. Let's fast forward to around here in the fourth. One point game. Joe Johnson goes for a 3 but ends up missing the shot. Marvin Williams goes up for the offensive board and is then fouled by Udonis Haslam, with it being Haslam's 5th foul. Well, somehow, the bookkeepers attributed the foul to Shaq, who was sitting at 4 fouls before this, giving him 5 fouls instead. This would be important, so keep this in mind. With the game tied at 104 apiece, D-Way goes for a drive at the basket before kicking it out to Ricky Davis in the corner who ends up breaking the shot, sending the game into OT. In OT, the game remained close throughout, with Miami taking a 3 point lead with 1.45 remaining, but Atlanta came back, taking a 1 point lead with a minute left to play. Miami with possession, Haslam spins off and tries a mid range jumper, which ends up missing. Shaq goes up for the offensive board it and, misses it. Rebound, hold it. We got a loose ball foul on Shaquille. and ends up fouling Al Horford while doing so. What should be his fifth foul ends up being his sixth due to that bookkeeping error from before, meaning Shaq fouls out of the game. Way over here with us and he got a chance to see it and Shaquille O'Neal has fouled out. Al Horford blocking out and look at Shaq coming over the young fella, the rookie's back. Horford hits both free throws, making it a 3 point game in Atlanta's favor, and Atlanta ends up winning 117 to 111. Pat Riley, head coach for the Heat, isn't too pleased with this and ends up filing a protest to the NBA regarding the outcome. The NBA looks at it and says, Yeah, no, uh, they fucked up. On January 11th, 2008, the NBA agreed with the Heat in regards to how the outcome was affected by the bookkeeping error and accepted their protest. In a press release, commissioner at the time, David Stern, said that due to the error, quote, Miami suffered a clear competitive disadvantage as O'Neal, the Heat's second leading scorer and rebounder that night, was removed from a one point game with only 51.9 seconds remaining, and then proceeded to fine the Hawks $50,000. So now what? The process was approved, but what happens now? Schedules for the next time the Heat and the Hawks play, that being March 8th, 2008, the conditions are that the game will be restarted with 51.9 seconds on the game clock, the score line at 114-111 to Atlanta, and Miami holding possession. Any player acquired prior to the trade deadline would be eligible to participate in the game, and Shaq would remain in the game with 5 fouls. When the protest was accepted, the Hawks had a record of 15 and 16, while the Heat were 8 and 27. Not looking too good for either team. But the trade deadline's coming up, so I'm sure. Back to the fact that we were only going to feel comfortable doing it if our medical people felt that Shaq had some left in the tank. Huh. On February 6, Shaq was traded to the Phoenix Suns for Sean Marion and Marcus Banks. And while people were more focused on how he'd fit in with Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, etc., etc., more eagle-eyed fans were wondering if he was eligible to play in the upcoming replay game with the Heat and the Hawks, considering the fact that he was a key component within the whole situation. Short answer: No, he wasn't allowed. Here we are again. Before we get into this, let's check in on both teams. The Hawks are not good, with a record of 25 and 36, pitting them at 9th in the East, while the Heat the he have seen better days, with the worst record in the NBA. But we're here to witness a rare moment in NBA history, so let's take a look. 
points, five threes in the game for LeBron. Cavs win 103-95. He did the Hawks replaying the final 51.9 of their protested game back in December. No scoring as the Hawks win this game 114-111. Uh, yeah, that's it. That small snippet of footage from a highlight reel is the only publicly available footage I could find regarding the redone game. Barely 11 seconds of the last 7 seconds of the game, with the only notable thing occurring within this footage being D-Wade missing a tough fadeaway 3. That's it. Trust me when I say I tried looking everywhere for this thing. I tried emailing Bally Sports to see if they had any archive footage of this. I tried messaging them on Instagram, on both their Bally Sports South and Bally Sports Florida accounts to see if either station had a recording, but as of recording this, I haven't really received a response. The closest I could get to any information of the redone game is an article written by John Swansburg two days after the redo, which gave some details about the game, both teams, and his experience viewing the game and these two images from the game. But apart from that, I've found absolutely nothing. It's kind of weird to have such a rare occurrence at a point in time where online distribution of video was becoming a huge thing and for no one to have uploaded even a crappy 240p recording from a VHS or something is really surprising to me, especially when lost media and media preservation in general has become such a huge phenomenon in the online space. So I'll say this. If you think you have a recording, whether it be a flip phone recording or a decent quality VHS recording, please go find it, upload it, anything man. Protests and games like these in the NBA are few and far between and who knows when we'll see something like this again. Probably this season knowing what the officiating is like at the moment. Tangent aside, the game ended 114 to 111 to the Hawks. The scoreline the game was restarted from, meaning nobody scored a single bucket and the Hawks technically won a game without scoring a single point. One more fun fact I'd like to note is that during the original Heat Hawks game, the Phoenix Suns were also playing a game. One of their players who played, Sean Marion, was included in the trade that sent Shaq to Phoenix. And you'll remember that one of the stipulations was that anyone traded before the redo was allowed to play. Looking at the box score here, we can see Sean Marion got playing time in this game, and also got playing time in this Phoenix game, making him one of very few to be credited to play two different games on the same day. That aside, hopefully the footage is found one day. After the result of the redo, the Heat and Hawks would play their originally scheduled game, a game where the Hawks would also win. By the end of the season, the Heat would finish with an abysmal 15-67 record, worst in the league, while the Hawks would finish with a record of 37-45, which gave them the 8th seed for the playoffs. Man, the East really sucked back then. They'd go on to play the eventual champion, Boston Celtics, but not before taking them to 7 games. Because of their record, in the subsequent 2008 draft, Miami would get themselves a lottery pick, specifically the second pick, which they would use to draft Michael Beasley. Anyways, here's a list of names in no particular order for no particular reason. In the seasons following this moment, the Heat would go on to make 7 Eastern Conference Finals appearances, 6 Finals appearances, and win 2 championships. The Hawks would only make two Easter Conference Finals appearances, but not before holding the second best record in the NBA in the 2014-15 season. It's no secret that the officiating for this season has been more than questionable, and this has been proven by the fact that two separate incidents has prompted teams to file protests regarding decisions made by the refs. One that occurred during a game between the Blazers and the Thunder, which was actually the inspiration for making this video, and another incident which occurred during the making of this video between the Knicks and the Rockets. While I'm all for good officiating, it'd low-key be really funny to see a protest be accepted and a redo to be done again. Anyways, that's all I got. As mentioned in the intro, sources used will be in the description. Shout out Shay Serrano for the article that inspired this video for the most part, and appreciate you for watching this.
you can feel the energy and the excitement getting ready for this one.